All right, so we'll call to order this meeting of the North Middlesex Regional School District School Committee for Monday, December 12th. Um, reminding the committee and any audience members that this meeting is being recorded. Uh, we'll do the roll call. We have Dave. Here. Thank you, Jessica. Here. 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 Lisa. Here. Uh, Mike. Don't see Randy. Oh, I saw Randy. Randy's here, can't hear us, or she's on mute, one of the two. She's on mute. All right, Susan. I'm here. And I'm here as well. Um, our next meeting of the North Middlesex Regional School Committee will be held at 7 p.m. on Monday, January 9th, 2023, which is very hard to believe. Um, consent agenda, we have approval of minutes from November 21st and December 5th. And we also have accounts payable warrants, payroll warrants, and uh, a series of donations from Shutterfly, Hannaford Helps to both the high school in Varnbrook and Special Olympics to Varnbrook. Like so moved. Second. Craig? Yes, ma'am. I only see the November 21st minutes in the pack, in the folder. There should be a link for each of them. Oh, I can. You can go right into the November. Susan, you see the November 21st? Which yeah, ones do you not see? But I don't see the December 5th that Craig mentioned. Because I don't have those ones. Um, it's the work session, so. I assume right. somebody took minutes. I wasn't at that meeting. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we'll pull the we'll pull the December fifth since we don't have those handy. Perfect. Thank you, Susan. All right. So the motion's been made and seconded uh, for the consent agenda minus the December fifth minutes. Any other questions, comments? All right, Dave. Yes. Jessica? Yes. June? Yes. Lisa? Yes. Uh, Randy? Yes. Susan? Yes. And uh, well, yes, so that's unanimous. Thank you. Um, Robin, did we have anybody for public communications? I didn't see anybody when I checked, but that was admittedly. Yeah, last I checked, there wasn't. I'll check again. If you want to move on, I can look. Oh. Right now. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, I don't yep. Know. All right. Um, up next, uh, I don't have a chairperson's report right now, but uh, we'll go over the superintendent's report. Superintendent Morgan. Sure. Thank you. Um, so normally we'd be doing our first budget message this time of the year, and I have asked to put that off until January, just because currently we are at a number that is higher than previous fiscal years. And that's really uh, due to a variety of reasons. Uh, um, just to go over a few, we've had to hire additional staffing to meet class size guidelines. And we've also had to hire additional special education uh, faculty and supports to meet our pre-K-12 need. That's really a result of a post-pandemic environment. Right now, uh, most of our additional staff are being funded through the ESSER grant. And pretty much all of those positions will need to stay in the district next year, and the ESSER funds uh, will not be available to cover the majority of those positions, so they will have to be rolled into the operating budget. Uh, so that's that's certainly a challenge that we're looking at now. We're also dealing with skyrocketing utility costs, uh, anywhere from 50 to 60 percent for both natural gas and electric a 14% out of district increase. So any of our students that are placed out of district, we're looking at a 14% increase across the board at a minimum for those um, placements. Uh, and finally, we have land increases in special education transportation, which our contract is up for renewal in FY24 and health insurance. Pretty much all of those, I think it's pretty easy to see um, are far beyond the 3% that we do try to stay within on an annual basis. Uh, but in many cases, these are, these are going to be double digit increases. So we are again, just looking at ways to manage 
uh, the current overall budget figure. Uh, we are looking to make some reductions, again, prior to that first bu budget message in January. These include pretty much everything's on the table from looking at potential reconfigurations uh, to some administrative staff, uh, potentially adding an in-house middle school LEAP program that will bring students back into the district that are currently placed out of the district, and really just looking at um, space usage as well in the district, again, to see if there's anything that we can do uh, to address some of the budget issues that we have, because we do have uh, keeping a, a keen eye on what's going to happen next year when all five of our collective bargaining agreements are up. So we're looking at significant increases going into FY24, but again, really trying to manage that because I think FY20, FY25 is going to be far more challenging with those five collective bargaining agreements um, up for negotiation, as well as our regular education transportation agreement with, um, with DBUS will also be up next year. So that's all I have right now. Again, there'll be a more comprehensive budget message delivered in January, but we, we do wanna try to address some of these issues prior to um, releasing the budget message. Thank you, Superintendent. Uh, Susan, do you have a question or comment? I did, just a uh, clarification. What is the end date of those um, collective bargaining agreements? Is it? It's at the conclusion of next school year. So the 2024? 20, 23, 24. So, so we would in all likelihood <laughs> be looking to begin negotiations um, summer or fall this coming summer or fall so that we can have something in place for the following school year. So we have one more full school year um, with all five of those agreements. But again, I think it's uh, probably prudent to begin the negotiations uh, in advance, uh, probably again, summer or fall, so that we have something in place for the spring. So the budget you're putting together um, the collective bargaining agreements are through the end of that budget. Yes. Okay, yes. so it's the fault, not this budget that you're working on, but the following budget that we would see um, the impacts of any collective bargaining agreements. Yes, but, but, but one of the challenges that we're facing is that in order to pass last year's budget, we reduced our budget by $300,000 just prior to town meeting. And we have far exceeded that $300,000 in hiring additional staff. I did really, again, to, to meet the needs of students, um, we've gone well beyond that $300,000. And then on top of that, we're, go we're going to face significant challenges with utilities and not additional right. placements. And possibly um, health insurance. What, what is the date, um, Nancy, that we usually get that health insurance information? What month? They, they really won't vote the numbers for next year until February. Okay. And so we're likely, the other yeah. piece, um, Nancy, am I correct in that we're likely not going to get the governor's budget until March? Correct. Change in leadership? That's right. Right. So th there's, there's really a, a, a lot of obstacles in dealing with a very challenging climate. Are we also anticipating double digit um increased percentages for health insurance? Right now we're using around 10%. Okay. But I don't have any um, indicator on exactly which way that's gonna go, if it's gonna be above that or below it. So again, okay. I'm kind of hoping for some kind of hints between now and right. uh, the public hearing, but. Um, and I'm sure with inflation, the, um, the uh, physical materials we're purchasing Yeah, I mean everything's as you're as as we're all aware that everything in our budgets have been going up. Um, so for sure, that's an issue. And you know, we're asking people to be as conservative as they can in some what they've submitted. So hopefully, we can find some creative solutions. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else, Superintendent Morgan? That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, moving on to new business. Uh, first item is the North Middlesex Regional High School 2023-24 Program of Studies. Principal McMahon. Can you hear me, Craig? I can hear you. 
I see a black square, but I can well, hear you. <laughs> my video seems to have failed me this evening, so. No worries. Uh, I think, uh, is Ms. Smith on board as well? Ms. Smith, are you here? Yes, I am here. Okay. Oh, invisible as well. Perfect. We can see her, yes. <clears throat> okay, so I'll, I'll begin and Ms. Smith can jump in at any moment. So uh, we, we've gone through it as always met with our department heads this past fall, uh, re-examined uh, current offerings, uh, looked at numbers uh, and looked at eighth grade numbers as well for projections and didn't really in the end have to make a lot of adjustments. Um, I think we're really carrying over. I think we're in a really good spot with our offerings right now. Uh, I think the new schedule is still, you know, adjusting to the needs of our students, but certainly between the work that our guidance office did with Ms. Smith kind of coordinating some of the adjustments to the new schedule, I think we had a lot of success. So I'll let her speak about any new offerings for next year, and then we'll take questions after that. So um, I'm sure everybody has seen the program studies. Um, we had some course description changes. That's just um, department chairs wanted to update just with, you know, going with the times about, you know, some of their classes. So you'll see some of that. But, um, you know, a couple of changes is in the performing arts. Um, so with our new um, band teacher, he would like to change what how percussion ensemble um, is offered. It's usually a four-year class, but a lot of times kids have to fit their half year class in with another half year class. So he has changed that's from a full year class to half year classes, but you can take both semesters. So that way you can fit into your schedule um, and you can take it multiple times, you know, over your four years. So that's just, that's one change. Um, the other thing is in the science department, um, you'll notice that we are not offering ast astronomy anymore. That was um, an elective that kind of is more of uh, kids do it as a filler. It's not so much as that they 100% really want to take the course. Um, and we're offering, we added our, our third in the Project Lead the Way series uh, sequence, is the biomedical innovations, which is going to be replacing that. Um, and then we are also adding back based on student requests and teacher recommendation, the accelerated physics um, offering. So that's, that's different, that's new in the science department. Um, in our visual arts department, we're adding back in the ceramics three wheel throwing. Um, we have a lot of students in the art department who are into the ceramics and they do not have that option, you know, which if they want to go off to art school, which we do have, you know, quite a few students that do the, in this area. So we're offering, um, we used to offer it wheel throwing a couple of years ago. Um, now we're adding it back in to see, just to give it an option for the students and see how many students are, are interested and can, in, that want to take that. Um, and just the other thing is our French department, our French teacher has updated all their course on, um, so uh, descriptions just to kind of ch change things about how things are going. And that's the one thing that she added. That kind of sums it up. Every, the department chairs have done a really, a lot of work over the last few years. So there's not really a lot of changes um, or addition or even deletions to be honest um, about with the program of studies. Anybody have any questions? Oh, Susan, I see your hand. <laughs> yeah, I just had a question about a project lead the way. How many? pathways do we have? Can you tell us a little bit more about Project Lead the Way? <clears throat> so um, I'll let Ms. McMahon jump in on the, with the specific of Project Lead the Way, but we do have three course offerings. Um, let me just get to the science because I want to make sure I do say it in the right sequence. Well, we really have, I'll jump in for a second. We have two right. pathways essentially. There's an engineering pathway uh, and a biomed pathway right now. Um, and, you know, all of our teachers have been trained um, in, in, within the Project Lead the Way training. It's actually pretty intense. There's a lot of hours teachers go through to, to kind of get certified to teach the course. Uh, we're finding that the curriculum is um, really a nice adjustment. I think we're probably going with 80% of what is asked of, about 20% of kind of uh, a little bit of ancillary materials being added in by the, by the teachers, but uh, very successful uh, popularity, no problem filling the classroom. So those two pathways right now have been very, very effective and very well enrolled. So happy with that. Susan, you're muted. Here's Susan. <laughs> Thank you. No, I'm excited about the Project Lead the Way opportunities, and I know um, at least at RIT, there's an opportunity to provide to apply to a scholarship if you've been through um, those courses. The um, dang, what's my second question regarding Project? Lead? I know there are um, engineering certificate. I didn't look in the pro uh, program studies to see if that specifically is still offered. Um, and you had like a designation on your diploma. Yep, Do we still offer that. Way, 
opportunities also get a special designation in some way? Not that I'm aware of, but I'll look into that. I mean, I, I know that certainly you mentioned IIT. I know there's other scholarship opportunities that, that are now being aligned to that. But as far as other delineations on the diploma, I have to find out. And that I'm not certain about, but I will definitely look into that. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Thanks. Thanks, Susan. All right. Um, yeah, I just had a quick question with the deletion of the astronomy um, being it's a half a, uh, a 2.5 credit semester course um, and there's nothing replacing it for that. If that was being used as a filler, and I understand not offering it again because students weren't uh, as interested in it, do we have enough half semester um, courses to accommodate their needs in their schedules because nothing's being added and if that one was being used, um, are we going to have enough for all the students who need to fill it? So astronomy was for grades 11 and 12, um, and the we do have we do have enough um, half year courses if need be. We are adding the biomedical innovations. Yes, it's it's a, a five a full year course. Um, we don't um, our astronomy numbers went down this year. Um, so I really think that, and we've talked about it, and the science department talked in great lengths, the whole department, about how taking that, that course off the table right now doesn't mean that in the future we can't add it back if we see that that's something that we need to. But right now, it looked like adding the other accelerated phys physics back in and the bi biomedical innovations was the way to go in that department. There are other um, electives in the other areas for juniors and seniors that can pick up the slack if need be that I think that are kind of right now are really like a high profile for those that, those grade levels where the astronomy was in a couple of years ago. So it's kind of like taking its, its turn and then it might come back up again. And if it does with the students bring it up, then we will definitely look at it at the I just want to make sure an eye is being kept on that. Yep, absolutely. All right, any other questions or comments on the High school program of studies. <clears throat> I just want to make a comment on the the format. Um, really appreciate the uh, separated out additions deletions document this year. Super helpful, um, and also the highlights in the document of what's changed. So, uh, really appreciate uh, you going through the effort to to put that in there. Made a lot easier, at least for me. So, thank you. Um, seeing no other questions, then uh, we'll take a motion to approve the 2023-2024 North Middlesex High School Program of Studies as presented. So moved. Second. Lisa and Susan, mm -hmm. thank you. Any other questions, comments? Last chance. I have to come up with a better acronym because in my notes I just put HSPOS and I probably should change that. So. <laughs> All That's right. misleading, uh, Craig. I don't appreciate it. Is very that. Misleading. Misleading. I, need to, I need to change that. <laughs> I'm upset you can't see my face tonight. See my reaction to that comment. That's okay. <laughs> I know you have your camera off so you don't distract us with balloons in the background again. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not tonight, buddy. Yeah. All right, uh, Dave. Yes. Jessica. Yes. June. Yes. Elisa. Yes. Randy. Yes. Susan. Yes. And I will vote yes. So that is unanimous. Thank you, everybody, for that. Uh, moving on to our next item, uh, which is a massive paragraph, but uh, the Ashby uh, feasibility study. I don't know if uh, June, if you're going to speak to this, or the superintendent, or Who's got this one? Um, I, I can start anyhow. Uh, two weeks ago, we had our last Ashby Elementary Building Committee meeting. Um, we'll have another one tomorrow. Um, but after much discussion, we unanimously voted to recommend to the school committee um, that the school committee approves appropriation of $300,000 to be used toward a feasibility study and also an OPM and initial design services. Brad, did you want to add anything or? No, I, I, I think that covers it. All right. Um, why don't I read the motion first and then Susan will get 
to you with uh, with your question or comment. Um, and the reason I want to do that is just in case there's any adjustments or questions specific to the language of the motion, because it is a bit lengthy. So, uh, Craig, Craig uh, yep. sorry to interrupt you. Are you reading the motion from the um, the agenda? Or are you reading the motion from what's in the packet? Oh, I'm reading from the separate agenda that's in that uh, folder number one. Because there was a slight um, adjustment. There was two additional words that, that was added. Okay. Which um, is the? So the one that's in the, the packet. Hold on. I'm just trying to, trying to see. You can, you, you can go ahead and what I'll do is I'll, I'll look it up. I'm going to yeah. look it's in the packet now. And if we need to adjust it, we can adjust it. Okay. I appreciate that, Robin. Thank you. All right. Um, so uh, I will take a motion that the North Middlesex Regional School District or the district appropriates the amount of $300,000 for the purpose of paying cost of developing a feasibility study with respect to the Ashby Elementary School located at 911 Main Street, Ashby, Massachusetts, for costs of owner's project manager and design services and for the payment of all other costs incidental and related thereto, set amount to be expended under the direction of the school committee. To meet this appropriation, the district is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to GL chapter 71, paragraph 16D in the district agreement as amended or pursuant to any other enabling authority. Any appropriate official or officials of the district are authorized to apply for, accept and expend any grants that may be available to the district on account for this project. Further voted that within seven days from the date on which this vote is adopted, the secretary B and hereby is instructed to notify the boards of selectmen of each of the member towns of this district as to the amount and general purposes of the debt here and authorized as required by the district agreement and by GL chapter 71 paragraph 16 D. That's correct. That's the correct wordage. Thank you. So I will take a so moved from somebody. Hello. Thank you. Second. Thank you, Lisa. All right. Um, Susan. You are muted, Susan. Next. I was just curious if uh, um, the MSBA, is this a feasibility city study that's in alignment with MSBA requirements? I just wanted to understand a little bit more about that or whether this is a preliminary process that allows us to apply for money. Just kind of curious that the, the intention of this feasibility study. So it, it, it's not an MSBA feasibility study. It would just be a feasibility study that would be done um, and be approved by the town to likely do a project that would not be sponsored by the MSBA. Simply because it's highly unlikely the project would be approved. The feasibility study, right, isn't being sponsored, but we would use this feasibility study to apply? No, we're, so, so we, we wouldn't be applying with MSBA at all. Um, this feasibility study would be to determine what the needs are um, for Ashby Elementary, um, you know, what the key areas of concern are to provide us with um, some options from the group that's doing the feasibility study and then to take a plan of action from there for the town to essentially cover um, whatever the project is. Because again, MSBA is likely not going to approve a project. And then um, is this going to be split between the towns based on the enrollment at Ashby Elementary School? It would be the responsibility of Ashby because I believe um, other than maybe one or two exceptions, all the students at Ashby Elementary are from Ashby. Okay. And if there was one, um, just a kid or something, it, the amount to that town would be very small. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's but it correct. goes to all three towns just because it needs to. And um, usually the, the town that isn't involved financially um, 
typically they say just go ahead because there's no financial impact on them. Okay. Silence. Nancy, I don't know if there's anything you want to add to that. Nope, uh, that's the size of it. It's really just um, within 60 days that the member towns would have the option of taking a vote. Um, and if they decide not to take a vote within the 60 days, then um, it's deemed passed. So often the towns, as Susan mentioned, if they don't have a, a fiscal impact, may or may not um, move that forward to a town meeting. Anybody else with questions? All right. So this will be to approve uh, moving forward to the next steps of the feasibility study. So Dave. Yep. Jessica. Yes. June. Yes. Lisa. Yes. Randy. Yes. Susan. Susan is muted. By me moving forward, we mean moving forward to the towns approving. Yes. Once we approve, then yes. the towns yes. can approve. Correct. Yes, we're moving to the next, yes, the next step. The next step. We're not saying go do it. Right. Correct. Okay, so yes. All right. Lisa, did I get you or did I skip you? Where'd you go? No, you got me. You okay, got sorry. Me. Short term memory, um, and I'll vote yes. So then that's unanimous. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, moving on to subcommittee reports. Frank, um, did you get Tom? Is Tom? Oh, did he join? I did not see he joined. Sorry, yep, Tom. He joined. Sorry. It's okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, yes. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry about that, Tom. <laughs> I have my notes covering half the attendee list, so I didn't see that. Uh, all right, moving on to uh, subcommittee reports. Uh, Lisa, do we have anything from Accelerated Repair? Nothing from Accelerated and nothing from Finance at this time. All right, thank you. Um, anything else, June, from the Building Committee <clears throat> or the Ashby Building Committee? Next meeting is tomorrow. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Um, communications or uh, negotiations, Tom? Any updates? Um, for communication, so, um, I know we, um, sent, uh, we posted the latest update on the website. Um, thank you, superintendent for sharing that in your newsletter. Um, we will probably reconvene after the new year to kind of take a look at the next quarterly update, um, and look at, at posting something again on the website. Um, and then for negotiation, nothing. All right. Thank you, Tom. Uh, policy, Randy? Uh, for policy, we just keep meeting and uh, trying to work through a couple of uh, policies, nothing to bring to the school committee yet. We did just have an earlier meeting uh, as far as the regional agreement uh, earlier with the DESE on some of the recommendations from the original uh, submission we made to them. I think it was a good meeting. I think we got a lot out of that. Um, we'll have to see where we're going forward when we have something. Certainly, we'll bring it uh, to the committee when we work out a few things. Excellent. Thank you, Randy. Um, any other business not uh, reasonably anticipated? All right. Um, just back on the chairperson's report, I did get a notification from Pepperell and Robin. I don't know if you saw this, um, that uh, the Pepperell members will have an appointment to make for the uh, Neshoba Valley uh, Technical High School uh, School Committee. So we'll work to get that on the schedule, um, we'll just need a majority of Pepperell members uh, to attend that in conjunction with the Board of Selectmen in, in Pepperell. Um, so we'll work on that. I don't know, Robin, do we have to, do they usually handle that or do we have to do anything on our end? Sure I, I haven't heard anything. I'll touch base with the town of Pepperell and see. Okay, thank you. Um, 
And then other than that, um, in, in whatever way that uh, you all and your families choose to celebrate uh, in the coming weeks, uh, wish you all uh, a happy holiday season. Uh, hopefully you take some time off if you're working. And if you're not, just take some time off anyway and uh, regenerate, rejuvenate, um, and be well, be happy. And with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right. Dave? Yes. Jessica? Yes. June? Yes. Lisa? Yes. Randy? Yes. Susan? Yes, and see you all next year. Tom? Yes. And I will vote yes. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one. Happy New Year. Merry. Thanks. Year. You too, everybody. Bye.